You're listening to Everyday Engineering, the City of Madison's engineering podcast where we talk about infrastructure. Complex topics explained simply. From the water that flows down your drain to the rain and snow that drains into the lakes. By way, the curbs and streets we design. City engineering touches your life in so many ways. Explained right now in Everyday Engineering. Ambulances, dump trucks, police cars, and more. Yes, they're all vehicles our city staff uses. And for so long, they've been maintained in an old, actually really old fleet building. And now a beautiful state-of-the-art building is up and fleet employees get a brand new home on the city's east side at 4141 Nakusa Trail. Yes, it is a gorgeous building, and we'll get more into that. My name is Hannah Molinitsky, City Engineering Public Information Officer, and here at the table today to tell us more on why you should care about the City of Madison's newest construction and fleet building is John Evans from Engineering and Fleet Superintendent Mahanth Joyshi. Thank you both for being here. Thank you. Thank you, Hannah. Yes, you know, when you think of it on the surface, you know, okay, a new fleet building, why should I care about this? But we're going to tell you exactly why you should be listening to this podcast here because we have a fun conversation today. Uh, you know, let's start with both on what you do in relation to this brand new fleet building and just in general here at the city so people know who you are. Yeah, sure. So um, I will be the occupant uh, of the building <laughs> along with my uh, our staff at fleet. It's about 40 people um, and it will be our new headquarters building. We're moving out of our old headquarters building. You mentioned how old it is, I have an affection for it because it's a 1954 building. It's also the year my mom was born. Uh, She might not appreciate me outing her age right now. Uh, She might not listen to this, but- uh, Oh man. That being said, it's very old and uh, is not uh, up to what we need to fix and maintain vehicles for the city. It was time is what you're saying. Beyond time. Beyond time. Yeah. We love Mama Joyce, but yeah. it is beyond <laughs> time. You. Yes, yes. Shout out to her if she's a podcast listener. Uh, uh, we'll find out. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> actually, uh, to give you some history, a lot of people, including John and others in engineering and in my department, have worked really hard on this since 2012. So this is after a lot of planning, a lot of work uh, to build this building. Obviously, with city timelines, it takes a while. Uh, and it's a big part of the reason I moved to Madison, actually, from uh, doing this kind of work in New York City. Mayor Soglin promised me this was moving forward in 2017. It's a big part of the reason I moved here was to move into this awesome new facility. Awesome. So I didn't I didn't know that. That's that's learning. Learn something new every day. Right. It was a tough decision uh, to leave uh, and move here. A big change uh, for my life and for my career. Uh, but the tipping of the scale over that, you know, three weeks, I tried to decide if I should do this or not. Was this brand spanking new building? And, oh. and we're delivering, right, John? Yeah, absolutely. Um, what do you do here? Tell, well, our, tell our listeners, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> How much time do we have? Yeah, right. um, <laughs> we're 20 minutes to try. So okay, yes. I, can, I can do it. <laughs> um, so I work for city engineering. Uh, our section in city engineering does facility management for city for city buildings. So one of our clients and customers is fleet services, um, just like the library would be a customer, police or fire would be a customer, et cetera. So my role on these types of projects is on the design side. Uh, My my background is mechanical engineer. I work with our section staff. We have a a mix of architects, engineers, construction managers. And uh, I was working with several other staff during design on this project. Actually, right before, I think right before you started, Mahanth, um, going back, I started working on this project in 2016 when I started with the city. Um, this was a this was a fun project. This is a this is a big uh, call it a monster project for yeah. the city. I mean, th- we haven't done a facility of this size and scope. You know, 30 million dollar facility, um, which is big for for our city. Um, 110,000 square foot. Yeah, I was just going to say, you say monster. What do you mean by monster by that? Is it the process? Is it how big it is? Is it expensive? Maybe all of the above? All of the above and more, (laughs) for sure. Um, And complicated. Yeah. Probably, I I don't think I'd be exaggerating if 500,000 people probably touched this project from start to finish, you know, between... Is that all? Holy moly, yeah, right? (laughs) Are we going to cap it at any point? I know, right? (laughs) Um, Just between all the designers city staff, um, people, you know, the staff at Fleet themselves that worked on this project, current and former, right? We've, 
mm-hmm. had staff turnover, um, even key people that were working on the project, mid-project, they said, hey, I'm retiring. <laughs> Good luck to my predecessor. Yeah, so it's uh, taken, it's taken some time. Right. It's taken some time. It takes a lot of people. It takes a lot of resources and money. Um, but, you know, when we think about fleet, you know, fleet is an internal service to the city, um, internal to our city staff, our agencies. Correct. But really is a huge part in making our city run that maybe residents don't quite realize or even know about. So, Mahant, can you kind of explain what fleet really does for our community and our residents when it comes to that, even though we are in an internal sort of agency? But sure. not really, because it impacts everyone. Yes, so uh, every uh, major department in the city, including engineering, and you mentioned police and fire, uh, and streets department, which takes care of our garbage recycling, leaf collection, uh, snow plowing, salting the streets, all of those are very equipment dependent operations. Uh, so the city owns and maintains 1,400 vehicles uh, through my department to uh, take care of all those needs that any city has. Um, so every city, village, state, country has a fleet department of some kind to do this kind of work, uh, which is you know one of the reasons my skills, I think, were transferable from the East Coast to here is because it's Trucks are trucks, and tires are tires, and uh, cars are cars. And you get lots of snow out on the East Coast, too. Sure. But we do, too. I know. A little more here. It's a little colder for a little longer, a little more snow. Uh, But I think winter is fun, honestly. Yeah, winter enthusiasts. You you say cars are cars and trucks are trucks, but I think there's probably a paradigm coming, right? I mean, especially the last couple of years between the the fuel transformation of how we fuel these cars and trucks, right? I'm really glad you brought that up. We're at the cusp of a massive, massive revolution in the industry. And Madison's actually on the forefront of that. This building's a big part of it. uh, And we are electrifying our fleet. So we have over 40 electric vehicles at this point. Talking to Tesla about getting police cars from Tesla right now. Uh, We have a bunch of Chevy Bolts, Nissan Leafs, electric forklifts. Uh, we're looking at electric trucking, which is, again, revolutionary for uh, the needs that we have uh, in our departments. And we're already, you know, one of the leading fleets in the country in this area, but we're at the very cusp of a massive revolution in this, and I think we'll be at the forefront of it. Uh, and this building is a big part of that. Solar heating uh, wall, solar roof, public charging for anyone in the public uh, through solar. Well, for electric cars, we'll also have city vehicle charging and city employees uh, hopefully will be buying electric cars and charging up. Think of this as a 50 year project that this building will be around 50 years from now. By then, and hopefully in a lot less time than that, we'll be having automated vehicles driving themselves. We're looking at that right now. Uh, we are going to have all electric vehicles probably uh, by 2030, our goal through the Madison, Sustainable Madison Plan that is a rubric we're working under. We want to have carbon neutral operations by that. So it's 2020. Some vehicles are around for are around for 10 years or longer. So we have to work really hard right now to get there. Which is awesome to hear Mahan say that because the 2030 plan that he mentioned. Just maybe as a short aside, you know, our section in engineering focuses very heavily on buildings with respect to that plan, trying to make our buildings carbon neutral, um, you, you know, powered by as much solar as possible. Um, it's hard for us to you know, the vehicles are kind of a foreign object to us. Like, we know how to handle the buildings, but when it comes to a car, I, that's Mahant's territory, and he is doing an outstanding job for the city. I just have to say that. Well, that's, a little shout out. We got shout out. We got love all around the table. Thank you. It's a partnership, <laughs> yeah. really, yes. because we have to work closely with engineering on the, for example, installing all the charging stations. That's done through engineering and facilities. We have to work closely with fire and police, for example, to transition their fleet into the hybrids and the electrics and the biodiesel, something else uh, we're investing heavily in. Um, And then on a more basic level, this building has something that all of us kind of want, okay? And our current facilities don't have. So I live in an apartment that I chose because there's natural lighting on three sides. Uh, And my previous apartment didn't have it and I didn't like it and I left. (laughs) I broke my lease (laughs) three months into moving here. I was very unhappy. Won't name who that is, that building. Hopefully they're not podcasting. But our, our buildings are not only old, but there's no natural light. So there, think windowless offices, windowless bathrooms, windowless hallways, uh, windowless repair bays for our technicians uh, who don't see natural light all day. Uh, and it's not as much fun as a casino. You know, where <laughs> there might not be natural light. There's other stuff going on in there. Right. Um, we're working in these uh, buildings that also don't have high enough roofs for the equipment we have. So our fire maintenance facility, which is consolidating into this. 
uh, we can't fit a lot of our fire equipment in there. Uh, it's one of the reasons why this was looked at as a need for the city. Uh, it's also worth mentioning we're consolidating four different facilities into one, which gives us a lot of efficiencies, uh, a lot less driving back and forth for our customers um, from east to west and back because Radio Shop is coming in and a lot of Radio Shop work is on vehicles to install electronic equipment. So what are some of the features? We're talking a little bit, you kind of are dabbling in it a little bit, Mahanth, you know, uh, this building, you know, what... What can people expect? It really is, on the outside especially, it's gorgeous. It is a beautiful building. And when I say that, you know, there's big windows, you talk about the natural light, you know, there's all of this, you know, beautiful, you know, exterior, but the purpose inside is really, the guts of it is really important as well. So can we talk a little bit about the features, maybe some that, you know, are in the building and maybe some that you're excited for. So let's let's go there. So it has to be functional. It has to be able to repair our our largest equipment, for example. So the fire department I mentioned has ladders, uh, which uh, you need to be able to raise. And so we have high ceilings in this building. It's a one-story building, uh, but very high ceilings, very wide bays, so that we can fit everything inside, close the bay doors, and actually work inside uh, if it's cold out, if it's snowing, etc. That's something we don't have right now in, in some of these uh, garages we're working out of. Uh, a lot of the work has to be done outside because the equipment doesn't fit inside. Uh, then it's also going to have more state-of-the-art equipment for auto repair. So for auto repair buffs out there, it's going to have a lot of automated systems on dispensing fluids, for example, where you can actually track the amount of fluids that you're putting into vehicles, and uh, that's good for tracking costs and Absolutely. efficiency. Find, find your lemon, right? That's right. <laughs> that's right. Uh, from a supervisory standpoint, for me and my senior staff, uh, having more employees in the same place also gives us efficiency. So the mechanic who's an expert on uh, fire trucks, for example, can also be an overflow if we need help with plow trucks in the same building. Sure. Um, so that is another efficiency for us. I think it'll be much better for our customers, more importantly, to have this consolidated facility. Um, and it, it's uh, functional beyond just the sustainability things that we're talking about. Uh, it can do everything we need, again, I think, for the next 50 years, uh, well beyond me and John being around. Right. Well, and, let's hope so, because yeah. it's a pretty penny. And, but yeah. it is worth it, because we, we, it is so necessary. I mean, we, we cannot operate without fleet. Worth right. every penny. Right. Absolutely. Right. Right. And, and that's an important part of our, our mission and facilities is we, we own our buildings, we operate our buildings as a city. We're the, these buildings are, we say 50 years, but we'll probably be there 75 years before so. we'd actually need another facility. That's been the trend in the past. So it's important to build these facilities to last for that you know, minimum 50 year time timeline. Um, I think Mahanti mentioned it a little bit, the, the natural light, the daylighting, um, that was purposeful in this building. Um, we wanted to reduce energy consumption. We want to in increase the indoor environment for our employees and make sure it's a more pleasant place to work. Um, some other features uh, related to that, uh, we have a radiant floor system throughout this building. What does that mean? So basically you take your heat and you put it through pipes in the, in the concrete floor. And because that heat is in the floor near where the people are working, you know, sometimes under vehicles, mm -hmm. so it's hard to get heat, heat to them. Right. Um, sure. Or if you're, even if you're sitting in an office, having that heat near you Mm -hmm. kind of and heat naturally rises so it's a very efficient way to ma make people comfortable without using a lot of uh, natural gas to wow i never the building. never even thought of that yeah. i think you know building building period you know here at the city has really evolved over the years and i think just you know construction and design as a whole i mean this does not look like your standard you know old school building that maybe people think of when you think of city government. You think of these old buildings that have been around forever. You get as much life out of them as possible, which is what we hope, what we're mm -hmm. talking about. Which we're not currently a, doing until right. next month. Still. Right. <laughs> right, exactly. But, I mean, this building really does not look like any other building that we have right now. It's very unique. Um, one, actually, I, th I don't know of another building offhand that has this feature, but we like to call it the, the, tro the solar uh, hat trick. What does that mean? Well, I'll tell you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're going to so, play hockey inside yeah, the building. Hockey, like your soccer, right? You score three goals, you get the hat trick. Hey, right? I like that. I'm a hockey player, so okay. yeah, I, I appreciate that jargon and that pun. But, <laughs> but like, what does that mean? What does right. that mean? So we have three different solar technologies on this building, which is unique to this building in the city, and I can't think of another one anywhere near us that has this. 
We preheat some air with solar. It's called a solar air wall. Yep. We generate electricity with solar on one of the roof sections. Love it. And we also generate some hot water, quite a bit of hot water, actually, um, through some solar hot water panels. So hence the... The solar we'll use it. Uh, yes. hat trick we'll uh, use it <laughs> yes yeah and I, I imagine you know you're talking about you know this beautiful space and how the natural light and and wonderful heating for anybody who's working underneath any vehicles um and then you're talking about all of the advanced equipment that we're going to be having the staff has got to be excited to move into this new i mean obviously you are Mahan, yeah. and, and and rightfully so you moved across the country to be this in this new space but i mean what does this mean for the staff and what are you hearing from your staff? I think, um, so uh, my staff don't agree on a lot of things. Uh, they don't agree with me on a lot of things. Uh, that's, I think, natural. Um, however, helps. we're all very excited about this move. I think all of us who move into this new building will look at ourselves differently every single day. Um, sure. Your work environment, I think, is very important towards your, um, your happiness at work, so to speak. And, uh, you know, benefits are great and salary is great and the work you do is great. But when you're in a work environment that's, I think, going to be much happier for everyone, that will be good for my division. Uh, it'll be good for me personally. Yes. Uh, as well. And are they, I mean, is there going to be some additional training on these new, these new equipment? And I mean, I guess, yeah. yeah, what can they expect? I mean, you can't just jump into it just like that. So I believe that training is constant. Uh, and we've already been doing a lot of training because the equipment's changing so much and the vehicles are changing. So two years ago, we had no electric vehicles. So we didn't have experience in maintaining electric vehicles or even or buying electric vehicles. And now uh, our technicians are gaining that knowledge. And uh, we're also passing it on to high school kids. Uh, we've been training high school kids in this equipment uh, in the local area. Which is awesome. Yeah. That's, that's, a, whole, that's a whole podcast right there. Uh, yes, it is. I know. Invite I, me back. Yeah, yes, we'll yes. Do, I'll do it. Uh, and I just don't, yes. don't want to be a Debbie Downer, but I will for a second. Our planet's roasting, right? It's roasting. And the West Coast, uh, where my parents live and a lot of my friends live, the entire towns are burning to the ground. The air has been unbreathable for weeks at a time. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're roasting because of the sun, right? Hurricanes are getting worse in the south because of the sun and the heat and climate change. Uh, and climate change is obviously real. Why not take that solar power to help mitigate that problem of us getting roasted out there in, in this planet is uh, headed in a bad direction. But these kind of efforts, the technology and the political will, if they exist together, will solve this problem. And I'm really proud that Madison's going to be on the forefront of this. Yeah. Yes, and I think if everyone who is listening to this, you are definitely, um, you are, everybody's got their own opinion, they've got their own beliefs, they've got their own, their own way of going about at um, climate change. So I think that, just so you're listening, we're not imposing or, or oppressing, but, we are seeing some benefits of respecting the environment, and we know that um, we want to work with it. Right. We want right. to work with it. And right. it, it's financial benefit to the city. Um, yes. If you look at all the energy efficiency components of this project, we estimated it's probably a $2 million, $2.5 million price tag over building something that would just be bare bones, right? Mm -hmm. We're probably saving on the order three, four $400,000 a year wow. on just operational costs. Easily. Um, yeah. You know, just lower utility bills, things like that. So when you factor all that together, there's a real return on investment, mm -hmm. um, regardless of the politics of climate change, um, how, how you land on that. This is a good, this is a ben the beneficial of the city. For me personally, it's, it's an example of thinking globally, acting locally, right? Yeah. So I like that a lot. I think we're, as we're wrapping up here, I, I would be remiss to not mention um, the old building on First Street will be the home of the new public market as of right now. So I think, um, how is that move going to go? Because <laughs> a lot of that stuff has got to go to the new location, right, Mahanth? How that, is that going to work? That's correct. And uh, I want to give some credit to my the uh, two staff at Fleet who are really uh, leading this um, from our side. That's Tyson Ressler and Randy Cook. Uh, my two deputies, they're doing a great job along with the engineering team. Absolutely, we should give a shout out to our construction manager, Dave Schaller. Mm -hmm. Yes. He has been outstanding, he's a rock star on this project. He's keeping things on schedule moving forward. Absolutely. Also, one of our um, design project managers, um, architect Jim Whitney. Yes. Uh, him. He was the main lead during design on this project, uh, making sure we stayed on budget, stayed 
moving the project forward between, between I think he's been involved all the way from 2012 to today. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, and he's still working with Dave during construction on the project, and they've been doing an outstanding job. And if the, our listeners don't know who that is, um, they may they may know a little bit more about them now. But the move, how do how is that move going to happen? And this is our last question, so okay. um, let's wrap it up. Uh, the move's a little bit complicated, but we'll be fine. Uh, we, we have to take some stuff out, as you mentioned, and we're going to leave some stuff there to be auctioned. Uh, we're going to sell a bunch of equipment. Uh, so if anyone out there is looking for uh, hoists, for example, for your vehicle needs, uh, we're going to be selling some of that stuff. So, uh, so it'll be cleared out before public market needs to do some of their pre-construction work. Yes, and so we'll have more information on that. You can go to the Fleet's website for that. I'm sure they'll be yes. um, putting some info out when that's available. Uh, thank you so much for being here both. We are very excited for this new building. It is gorgeous. You will see it on Nakusa Trail. Hopefully we'll have a grand opening coming up soon. Um, but if you're listening to this after that opening, uh, you can see it there for many years to come. Hopefully right. um, you'll be able to see it in its uh, beautifulness. And we have a lovely website with uh, time-lapse pictures mm-hmm. during construction that people could check out even today. Yes, yes. Yeah, the it's at, oh, yeah, it's at cityofmadison.com slash fleet service. Yes, and we will make sure that that link is on our Facebook page um, and our Twitter um, for engineering, especially also on the fleet website. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks, this Hannah. was fun. Thank you, Hannah, for having me. Yeah, making sure that um, people understand that uh, a new building and fleet is so important to all of us. Um, Even though it's an internal service, this building is very external and very visible in our community. So if you want to listen in on other topics or other episodes on everyday engineering, you can click over to the City of Madison Engineering Facebook and Twitter because we are always here for you every day in engineering. 